The CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite. Good evening. For parts of North America, the sun went out today. For a little under three minutes, the forces of darkness ruled in daylight as a great swath of shadow up to 190 miles wide cut across the continent from the coast of Oregon to Greenland. It was the last total eclipse of the sun for North America until the year 2017. Thousands of scientists and amateur viewers saw stars and the planets Mars, Venus, and Mercury briefly dominate the daytime skies. There's been a good deal said in recent days about the ways ancients responded to an eclipse, but as Eric Engberg and Terry Drinkwater report, modern man still hasn't lost his sense of wonder. The moon's movement across our line of sight to the sun, just beginning here, gives the impression that a bite has been taken out of the solar disk. These pictures of the eclipse were taken from a specially equipped Air Force research plane carrying scientists and photo equipment. Cameras on board, fitted with extremely dense filters over their lenses, photograph the disappearance of the sun behind the moon from a point over North Dakota near the Canadian border. From 40,000 feet above the cloud cover, scientists studying the eclipse had an unparalleled view. Slowly, the moon blots out the entire sun as the moment of total eclipse arrives. Some final sparkles of sunlight filter toward Earth across the moon's mountains and valleys. Then darkness. With the filter removed from the camera lens, the corona of the sun can be clearly seen. Study of this solar atmosphere is one of the main scientific benefits from an eclipse. More is being learned about the corona all the time. Many experts believe it has a direct effect on the Earth's weather. The moon's movement brings forth a second sunrise ending the mid-morning darkness which had stretched across the horizon. Eric Engberg, CBS News, airborne above North Dakota. At the Goldendale Observatory in Washington State, astronomers, amateurs, and professionals alike cheered the moon as it started to move across the face of the sun. Nearby, at a replica of Stonehenge, Druids, neo-pagans, invoke their god, Mother Nature and Father Time, to ensure cloudless skies. And generally, the heavens were clear for eclipse viewing, the last chance most Americans will have in this century. Because it's dangerous to look directly at the sun, or even at part of it, eclipse gazers had to be ingenious. Through peepholes, reverse images of the lunar solar spectacular captured inside shoeboxes. Infants put safely inside paper bags. Cardboard masks with special dark lenses. Many of the thousands here had prepared for months for these moments. As the totality of the eclipse approached, the druids at Stonehenge seemed almost spellbound. And finally, at the moment the moon passes between the sun and this spot on Earth, total darkness. Fireworks, a Roman candle, Venus and the stars, the distant suns, the only light from the universe. And then again dawn, a second Monday morning. And the people were still in awe. It was, it was really a very incredible experience. I, I saw some corona and, you know, I... Oh, I'm scared to death. I'm so scared. A very spiritual experience, it is to me anyway. As the warmth of the sun returned, those who watched knew that they had seen an event most mysterious and dazzling. Terry Drinkwater, CBS News, Goldendale, Washington. Not everything about the eclipse was predictable. The old story is that roosters sleep during an eclipse and crow when the sun reemerges. Well, as part of its eclipse coverage today, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation hired a rooster and a prayer plant. The rooster crowed during the Back eclipse, but failed to greet the sun's reappearance, and the prayer plant never did close up, indicating it might have needed a talking to. High tides tugged by the eclipse hit the upper Atlantic coast today, forcing out residents in a low-lying areas, or low-lying areas throughout New Jersey and Massachusetts. Persistent rain over the weekend, combined with last week's snow, to push the Potomac River at or near the flood stage from West Virginia to the District of Columbia. It was hard to tell some roads from rivers. At least one school district was shut down, and there were widespread reports of minor flooding. Yet more snow hit parts of the Midwest, blanketing sections of Missouri, southern Illinois, and Arkansas, 
were there was called the worst snowstorm in 60 years.